WHPR 88.1 FM. Live from Detroit, Michigan, USA, in my house, hosted by T. Carlita, where the true stories are told and great music is played. Merci beaucoup, DJ Former en Francais, for putting together this special, exclusive, mini mix which he calls Carlita's Groove hmm Carlita sounds like an inspiration from T Carlita anyway thanks again all right guys gals everybody listening get ready to listen to Carlita's Groove mini mix by D former from France a lot of my favorites in here some mixes from uh, Deha Jamerson, Dwayne Jensen, Chippy, Farley, Jack Master Funk, The Endless Pokers, and Night Moves. That's who all the tracks are by. Hope you know what the songs are when you hear them. Check it out.
Jit happens at the DIA, May 23rd, the Jitterbugs, pioneers of the Jit. Be there. Today's In My House is very exciting and special to me. I go one-on-one with the legend Maurizio Dami, better known to us as Alexander Robotnik. It was 1983 when he made the everlasting song that we know and love and to this day still play and remember and you're going to hear that today and you're going to hear him talk about that song and you're going to hear him talk about other things as well i caught up with him we had a wonderful interview a great conversation he's a cool guy to go with it so today be ready alexander robotnik is going to tell us tell us his true stories and plus on this show i also am going to show highlights from this past mother's day live stream live stream from larry levan it was the larry levan way uh, dot org they put on this live stream big party on mother's day from noon until 6 p.m honoring the legend himself so i'm going to show some highlight clips of that too so in the meantime sit back enjoy the show and check out this song that's coming on that's on right now it's called Dive by D. Jules. And hope you enjoy this slideshow presentation. And thanks to the guests that have been on in my house show so far. These pictures are just some behind the scenes footage of them being here. Thanks a lot, you all, for supporting this show so far. And let's just see how far we can take this thing. Thanks a lot. Here's D. Jules. Dive.
Hello, hello, Mr. Alexander. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, I can't it's see your. I want to see your face. Yeah, yeah. Can you see it? No. Just, oh, I don't know what it way I can do it. Can you Can you do it? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm with him. Ah, okay. This is. Oh, oh. This is maybe. I see you doing something there. <laughs> Il video è disattivato. Take your time. <laughs> Hi, there you are. <laughs> there he is. Oh my gosh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Alexander Robotnik. <laughs> Mr. Robotnik, good, good, good evening to you. I see you. Hi, you see me too. <laughs> Yay! Don't you love the internet? Yeah. In the bottom. I'm a monster as usual. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So, okay. um, how do you say good evening, good morning? Say it in Italian for me. Say hi, say something to me. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, yeah. Yeah. Anche se qui è pomeriggio. Buongiorno. Okay, it sounds French. So, did you get... Did you, it does. It's Italian, though. So, Mr. Robotnik, I have a question for you. Mm, great. Uh, so... How did you come up with okay your name say your say your name your retail your birth I'm name Dr. Robotnik my, my real name is Maurizio Dami <laughs> So there it is Maurizio Dami Dami yeah Maurizio Dami can you so tell So why you you call yourself Alexander Robotnik Yes how why yes, yes, Exactly So um it's, it's a long story because Alexander Robotnik was um, a, a little novel I wrote, so it was the, this title. Uh, this guy was supposed to be born in Kanchaka and then immigrated in France because of the Stalin persecution, you know. So that's why he, uh, he was singing in French. And that's, that's, that's the story. So I invented this name because of this a uh, short novel I, I wrote. And then, at that time, all Italians, artists, choose uh, English name, because uh, also in Spaghetti Western, all the director and the actor were supposed to be English, but <laughs> they were Italian, you know? Okay. And there was music, this happened a lot with the Italo Disco, everybody would have uh, English name, uh, so, they pretended to be uh, American, but I pretended to be Russian. <laughs> so, to, just to do something different. Because you are different, right? You are very different. Di say, diff say, how do you say different in Italian? Differente. It's similar. Okay, so differente. So, I am differente. Say that one. Io sono differente. Io sono diverso, si dice. All right. So how do I say yes in in Italian? Si. Si. Oh, that's good. I could do that one. Okay. Well, I'm a, I'm gonna do a little. Let's start with this one. Got it. Got it. Got it. So let's talk about um, the fate. We have a song that every over here we love, 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 and this is how I came inspired to to reach out to you. And first of all, let me first say. Thank you, thank you, thank you for responding to my SoundCloud message. Because first of all, I was glad that it was for really you. <laughs> so, grazie, grazie for that. Grazie, grazie, grazie. Um, well, before I go with the, the first question, let's talk about can I have an ashtray? Yeah, can I have an ashtray? Because I'm a heavy smoker <laughs> and no one smokes in the studio, you know, so I, <laughs> but I like to smoke in my studio, I don't care about synthesizer. Anyway, they are still alive 30 years later and I smoke a lot. Do so you, do you they are still alive, I'm still alive, so I don't care. Does your uh, synthesizer smoke cigarettes with you? 
No, but I smoke cigarettes, so they smoke, they smoke cigarettes too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are smoking. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm, I'm a bad smoker. Problems de more. Problems d'amour. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, problem d'amour. <laughs> Pro problem de more. Thank you for correcting me on that. How did you come up with that? What was the inspiration behind problem de more? Uh, okay. Um, um, Tonton Club, it was au, au, a BBC, this stuff. This, this au, I had in my my brain and then the story was first I invented the story the story was a, a robot who fallen in love for a girl but he's a friend she can understand he's a robot so he's not sure the hand have the uh, right temperature you know or uh, when when he sleep he, he doesn't snore you know? okay so, uh, <laughs> Uh, and this is his pain for uh, love, you know. So, problem d'amour is that. Then, the music. 
uh, at that time I, I, I was listening a lot of uh, English um, pop and uh, a new wave uh, so my, my taste was to listen to Joy Division and New Order, this stuff and my first project, uh, Italian project, was Avida and it was a kind of dance cabaret with the music was very dark and in the style of uh, new wave, but the lyrics were totally nonsense. You know? <laughs> so um, this music, I, I liked that and people appreciated that, but there were no way to make some money with that music, you know. So I, I, I met a friend of mine, it was Giampiero Bigazzi from Fast Records, and he told me, ah, you, if you put just a bass drum in four and you sell 10,000 copies, this is disco music, the money is there. So I went home and I started to work on disco music because I need money, you know. Right. And what I produced was Problem d'Amour, that is disco music at all, you know, it's not. And it didn't match the, the, the disco music of that time, you know. And so, so, so why he was not taking great consideration at first, especially in Italy, just in Naples, because in Naples has a big taste of music, they appreciated that track. And then after a while, uh, some friend of mine uh, coming back from UK or uh, USA, he told me, ah, I saw your record in a, in a record shop, or, oh, I listened to your track in a club, but at that time it was very provincial, no English at all. Uh, I, I was used to go just to India, wow. <laughs> you know? and so I didn't care, and after a while I was also bored by that project, so I turned uh, on different stuff, you know, mm. but after 2000, when I was connected on internet, one, one day I tried to digit Alexander Robotnik on Alta Vista, there was a search engine at that time, yes. and I got 30,000 results, I can't remember, but something impressive. So, mm -hmm. so it was a very bad period for me because I was making um, world music in nine, during the 90s, but at the end of that period that music was not in fashion anymore. So uh, I needed money. <laughs> I was 50, you know, <laughs> was no job, and that's why I thought, okay, maybe I can go back to Alexander Robotnik. <laughs> and someone sent me an email. Do you still DJing? Never DJ in my life. I answered, yes, I'm still DJing. And I started DJing in France in, in 2003. On 6th of June, it was my birthday. Hey, I'm June the 7th. We're, I, my birthday is June 7th. All right, we're going to have a party. Oh, that's my day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut and, you off. Okay, it, it started everything. Now is, now is uh, how, how long? It's 12 years I'm, I'm DJing and a very long time. Okay. <laughs> so... Now, so you do know that, do you even, do you even know that that record is still, that it still has a strong impact today? Do you know, do you understand that? Yeah, now I understand it. For a long period, I couldn't listen to that, honestly, because uh, to me it was not professional or it was, I didn't like the sound, especially during the 90s, you know. Okay. And the groove also was not working much for me. Okay. But then in 2000, I listened to that track again. And suddenly I thought, oh, wow, this is, this is very good. And I still play it. Okay. So when you <laughs> made I it. I still sing it. I still have the fun to sing it. So I'm, I'm, now I'm more proud of this track than the period that I made it. That is amazing. So a track that you made, you weren't really, you really didn't quite like it, but you put it out anyway, and it became a very famous. I mean, your name is known with that track. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very linked to that track. Sometimes it's kind of prison, but you, but it's 
I'm very advantaged on this stuff. So what um for what you do now the music that you do now what kind where where are you mostly accepted where where do you get where's your fan base come from today Huh <laughs> this, is a, this is a big question I I don't know because um when I started DJing uh, it was Electro Clash was in fashion and Electro Clash was connected in, in some way to the 80s so for me it was easy. It was like to go on 
on a uh, on something that that I just interrupted, you know, 20 years ago, and I I, I go um, straight, but then things changed because three or four years later, the minimal techno came, uh, and then things started to go back to the 90s. And the 90s for me was a very no period for me, for dance music. I, I, I was not used to go to clubs any, uh, at all, and just some raves or... I, uh, I listened to radio during the night and I appreciated what in Italy was called underground. It was the first deep house with the organs, you know, this stuff. And I liked that music, but never did it. And in that period, I was just India, Kurdistan, uh, world music, Africa, and no European music at all. But anyway, now uh, the problem is everything is uh, on again, yeah. <laughs> okay? From New Wave, from Italo Disco, Deep House, Tech House, Electro, uh, Techno, everything commercial, trance, and everything seems to be stable, you know, like, uh, like don't, doesn't move, <laughs> I think, okay? okay. Right. And in this situation, I just started using the styles as a word, as colors, you know, as just um, part of expression. But I can't refer myself to any style anymore, you know, okay. the, in this period. Okay. So let's talk about techno music um, a little bit, because my show is a... Um, I like to call where true stories are told and great music is played and it centers because I am from Detroit. I'm born in Detroit. So the show is centered around Detroit techno, right? So what are your ideas about the Detroit techno scene? And you can, you can, you can answer this question from when you first found out about Detroit techno up until what you know Detroit Techno is, the movement, just Detroit Techno in general. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I got into Detroit Techno basically maybe 20 years later than, you know, than it was created. <laughs> because I first time I started to hear about Detroit Techno was in 2002, 2003. When I uh, was, I was and still am friends of Marco Passarani and the crew in Rome that was really friends of underground resistance, and so they introduced me to Detroit techno. But in that period, it was not the music in fashion in Europe, so I was listening to it, but not much and not with the heart of my friends because they. They lived the, the, the first period, so the, the, the born of that music, it was much more exciting that listening to that 10 years later, understand? That's why I, I don't know much of Detroit techno, but every time I listen to something and this, I like and this, this, this is Detroit techno. So I, it, my, it's just an unknowledge, you know? okay. but, but I appreciate it. And it's, it's funny because Alexander Robotnik is taking good consideration in two cities, American cities, that are really uh, not, not really friendly uh, uh, between them, <laughs> them, you know. So Detroit and Chicago. <laughs> so there is always big competition. It's like in Italy is Firenze and Pisa, you know, it's always like this since centuries. Okay. You know? So it's strange for me because uh, I don't know which part represents me uh, more, you know, if Chicago or Detroit. For, for something maybe it's Chicago because uh, for example, at the first, when, when Problem Damour came, it was a distributor from Chicago that um, appreciated that track and he believed in that. He started to 
uh, to spread it in, in, in the States, you know. And uh, a radio, a local radio, took uh, a like jingle for this radio for 10 years. So I when, when one time I was playing in Chicago, I went out of the club in the morning, I was smoking my cigarettes, but not 20, I don't know, the law, the absurd law, like 20 meters from, from the, the club, no? So a police car stopped in front of me, I, I thought, oh fuck, because I'm, I'm smoking in the entrance. <laughs> but he went out with a, with a poster and he asked to sign the poster, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a poster robot. And then 10 minutes later, he came back with another poster. This is my colleague, as he want you sign the poster for him, you know? Wow. So this is, is funny, you know? In Detroit, the, the, when I played at the, at the festival, yes. uh, it was like two, 2004, 2005, I can't remember well. But really, I, I understood the the mood of, of Detroit, of that music. So for the first time, I saw Underground Resistance live, you know, and I, I knew that this, this, this kind of uh, part of music I missed it, uh, and it, when it was the time to, <laughs> to yeah. listen to it. Now I think that music could be in fashion again because the uh, young people, they are more and more attracted by techno and they are listening a, a lot of techno from the early 90s, the end of 80s, so I think now there is much more room for that music, and I start also <laughs> to to listen to it more than before. Okay, that's, that's all I can say about this. Right? Well, you know, <laughs> we, you know, I really truly appreciate you. Appreciate I, I you want, much. I, I want I want to say something else yes. about this point. Okay, the, I went there for the festival. The atmosphere on the festival was good, but in the city was not very good. There was kind of depression around uh, and a lot of beggars and so the, the mood was not fantastic. But this year I went there just last month and I had a totally different impression. A lot of, I don't know, I, I, I love that new city for the architecture first because the, the tower of Detroit are the best in the world. And uh, and it's very a pity if someone is not is not well uh, uh, in well conditions, you know. But I think the, so. For the first time, I I, I saw a clean uh, downtown. These towers yeah, in the sky it was fantastic and nice people around. So completely different mood. So congratulations because I think your city is getting up up. Again. Yes, we are. And I appreciate I appreciate you saying such wonderful things about our city. And one and one more thing. Um what is what is Mr. Are you going to what is Mr. Alexander Robotnik working on now? Where what are some of your new projects? What are you doing now? Yeah, um okay. Uh, basically a new album uh, that, that this time I, I produced too much in the last three years, last two, three years, because I had a problem, family problem or something, so I was a bit anxious, and uh, so I, uh, when you are anxious, you start to release music, and sometimes it's too much. So now I want to take my time to make a very good and last okay. <laughs> album. Okay. okay. And second is the project I have with Ludo Spinsky, uh, that is the analog session is a very big project because it's uh, electronic music but improvised and you synthesize it not just for, for producing music but we play them and we improvise with them and the results are uh, is a kind of techno that has nothing to do with the present and past techno is something new and so I'm very excited by this project.
Well, that concludes tonight's show. The special Alexander Robotnik edition. Hope you had fun. Hope you liked it as much as I did. Be sure to tune in next week when we have the After the Movement Party. We'll have live in the studio some folks in town from out the country. First of all, we're going to have Derwin Hall, Detroit legend as well, from the Happy Submerge era, uh, UR era back in the day. And then we're going to talk to uh, D. Former from Paris, France, along with his buddy DJ Raybone Jones. They'll be hanging out. Plus, Klaus Bacor from Cologne, Germany. If all goes well, he'll be here too. For now, we're going to ride out with a little movement party just to kind of get you ready for the big movement weekend. Have fun, party, be safe. See you next week.